Today, I would like to talk about education vision and how and why you can build one uh, when you are engaging uh, with agile teams. So uh, we will cover uh, several topics, several steps. So first of all, we will talk about what an educational vision is and why we build one. Uh, then I will t t tell you or I will take you through the steps how to build an education vision and then uh, how to implement one uh, with a team. Uh, before we do that, uh, I would like to just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Natalia Lucas uh, and I am an agile coach at uh, Vistaprint. Uh, I'm talking to you from Barcelona actually. And yet yeah, Vistaprint, I'm helping uh, teams and leaders to improve the ways they work. Um, also, I'm focusing quite a lot on helping uh, to grow the, the talent in, in our organization. Um, and so one of the, um, the tools or the practices that I, I use um, in my coaching is actually the educational vision that I'm going to tell you about uh, today. All right, uh, I also would like to share with you my contact details. I will be more than happy to, uh, to share more about this topic or any, part, any other topic that you would be interested in. So feel free to contact me. Um, so let's get back to the topic. Um, so let's start with a, a little bit of an explanation what an education vision is and why it's a good idea for you to have one when you are uh, engaging with agile teams. So um, it is a, a simple and very practical framework um, that you can use. It is very useful, especially when you are um, doing sort of a small engagement with the teams, uh, when you are, for instance, planning to engage with an agile team for, let's say, half year or one year, when it's probably not a longer term uh, engagement, uh, but, you know, just like a smaller um, uh, engagement with several increments. So the education vision is very practical to use um, in this case. Um, it is a sort of educational plan um, that you can divide into several increments and deliver it uh, with the team. Uh, you can measure um, uh, also your impact through through wh while you're delivering the plan. And uh, it can consist of different educational elements. So it's not only about uh, delivering trainings to the team, but you can also think about different workshops, book clubs, um, facilitation sessions. So it's pretty much a combination of different um, sessions or interactions with the team. Uh, so this is a little bit on, on the what um, and why. Why is a good idea to actually build one or to have one? Uh, when you are engaging with the team. Um, so I would say, first of all, uh, the why is um, having a vision. Uh, it really gives you a very simple and pra practical structure. Uh, so your your coaching or your engagement with the team is not random. It gives you some, you know, um, steps or it gives you some structure to, to follow with the team. Um, and, you know, once you are building it, we will talk about it a little bit more in a moment, uh, you will be able to measure actually and understand the impact of your work, uh, of your coaching with the team. Um, so, yeah, that's another important why, uh, why, to, why to have one, because I, I believe that all of us, we really want to understand whether we are having a good impact uh, and what that impact is when working with agile teams. Um, and also, uh, it doesn't necessarily focus only on the kind of the skills and the practices and the tools. So you're not only introducing sort of, you know, more this kind of skill set to the teams, but it also focuses a lot on the culture and the mindset of the team. Um, so, uh, uh, and as we know, uh, the mindset and culture is very important in Agile. So, uh, having an educational vision is going to also help you to focus on these aspects. All right. So, now when we understand the what and the why, let's look at the simple steps how you can build an education vision. So, the first step is um, initiating the engagement and meeting with the team. So, typically, uh, 
you know, before you even build education vision, so the first thing would be that a team or an individual reaches out to you with a pull signal. They come uh, uh, with some, some sort of challenge or issue that they are trying to, to solve. Um, and yeah, they come to you as a coach. Um, and so the first step or the first thing I would recommend is to, to meet with them. Um, meet with the, the individual or the team or the subset of the team. I also would recommend to, for you to pair with another coach if that's possible in your organization. Uh, because he having, uh, you know, a pair or having another person being uh, with you throughout the, the engagement, um, it, will, it will always give you a different perspective. You can discuss next steps. You can discuss feedback. Uh, so it's always great to have another perspective, another pair of eyes and ears uh, in your coaching engagement. So if possible, pair up. Um, and then once you meet the team, uh, so the first kind of objective of the meeting is to get a really good understanding of what it is that they are struggling with or what it is that they are trying to solve so what is the ask and also what are their expected outcomes uh what do they want to get out of this uh, coaching engagement uh, with you um how to do that um so you can do that by asking obviously a lot of questions i will i will uh give you some examples of those questions in a moment um and after you get a good understanding of what the task is, um, also make sure that you explain what they, as uh, the recipients, uh, what they can expect from your coaching engagement, how much time you will be able to com connect, uh, sorry, uh, to commit, um, what will be the structure of the education vision, uh, you know, whether you are thinking about um, uh, training sessions or, uh, well, what will be high level the structure, obviously you will be um, then uh, defining it a little bit more into details um, once you will get all the input from the team. Uh, also make sure that you explain uh, that their commitment is very important in this engagement because they wouldn't be able to obviously um, um, fulfill or get to the outcomes without being really committed. Um, discuss what will be the norms for you to, to work together and whether you will be able to deliver the work in one increment or what will be maybe the timeline. So discuss, you know, all the important details of your engagement and how you will work together. So this would be uh, kind of the first meeting, uh, getting a lot of information through there. And as I was mentioning, uh, what, are, what would be the right questions to ask during this meeting? Uh, so, yeah, try to ask deep questions to, uh, to kind of meet them where they are to understand um, what it is that they are struggling with and also where are they in, the, in terms of their agile experience. Uh, so also try to get a good understanding about the team, you know, how many members the team has, how long they have been together, where the team is located, any specifics um, of the collaboration, interaction, stuff like that. Um, obviously, this is not the full list of um, of the questions, there are many more, but it, it at least gives you a little bit of an idea what you can be asking and discussing during the first uh, meeting with the with the team. So once you do that, um, then the next step would be getting to know each other better. So you know, as much as you want to to know the team um, and their interactions, it also is, is important that they get to know you. Uh, a little bit better. So the, one of the purposes, obviously, uh, to build relationships um, with the team and the team members. Why you want to do that? Uh, well, simply because um, you want to create a certain trust, uh, um, trust environment in between you, uh, because that way you will be obviously able to deliver much better uh, outcomes and you'll be much more impactful for the team. Uh, so yeah, try to create relationships, try to get to know the team members or also let them to ask about you. How you can do that, um, uh, try to meet them in person. You can do that, you know, meeting them, them as a team uh, during ceremonies, um, but also maybe 
maybe try to set up uh, separate one-on-ones with all the team members uh, during which you can talk about some informal uh, things but also you can talk about um, how they have been doing in the team uh, what are the, the challenges and things like that so uh, make sure that you build relationships before before you even kick off any any further education and uh, second important part of this getting to know each other step is observation so as a coach as you know it is really critical for our work to to observe uh, the, the teams or the people who we serve um, so how can you do that so simply uh, try to agree with the team that you will be joining their ceremonies and any other communication that they have uh, so ask them to add you on their email lists uh, uh, to add you to any chat channels or any 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 kind of communication that they are using um, the reason to do that is obviously through observing um, the teams throughout these different communication channels you'll be able to learn much more about what they really need and where they really are so this is going to give you yet an additional um, additional type of information and input for your educational vision um, so once you do that once you go through this step uh, then you can kind of start getting together and uh, to in order to prepare the proposal of your educational vision um, so uh, again if you have the chance of the first step when you kind of uh, get together to, to prepare the proposal uh, would be to collect all your learnings if you are working with a pair so another person has been kind of going through these initial steps with you another coach uh, get together um, ideally in in a space with a whiteboard or a flip chart and just try to collect all your learnings all that you have um, observed all that you learn from the different discussions and interactions from the team so far uh, put everything on on the on the board um, and then start to think about uh, what uh, what will be the right um, skills or the sessions or the type of um, information and trainings that you could offer to your team uh, look into your coaching toolkit look into uh, what you have experienced um, what you you are able to to deliver to the team um, and while you are doing so also trying to think about um, kind of what you have been observing in terms of the culture and the mindset in the team so don't on, don't only focus on uh, the hard skills you know what it is that the team might need to improve uh, from kind of the skill set perspective but think about also kind of their mindset and the uh, the culture what are their values what are the behaviors that the team has been showing during the moments that you have been observing them um, so once you put all this um, on your whiteboard or wherever you will be uh, pre preparing the proposal uh, then the next step would be um, uh, creating a hypothesis for the educational vision with measurable goals and also coming up with a proposal of around seven eight educational topics um, so what it means um, so you could potentially start with those educational topics so it's pretty much try to try to list down uh, topics that you believe will be the most uh, useful for the team to to go through uh, try to describe them in terms of what those uh, topics or sessions will be about and why you believe that those obviously topics will be uh, helpful for for the team um, and um, at the same time try to create really the hypothesis so based on the, obviously uh, the initial discussion with the, with the team where they shared their outcome the, the expected outcome try to build a hypothesis where you will define uh, what it is that you want to do with the team um, um, where you believe or so what you believe should be the results of this engagement and how you are actually going to measure that the engagement has been has been successful I definitely advise you to to think about uh, 
well, rather simple, but definitely a list of measurable goals uh, that then you can be checking against during and at the end of your engagement. So the measurable goals uh, can simply be, um, you know, some changes in the behavior, uh, changes in their metrics, uh, performance metrics. Um, um, yeah, it can be simply just making sure that the entire team goes through all the, the educational sessions and stuff like that. So think about, again, l linking back to the, the originally outcome that the team expressed. Uh, think about what the measurable goals should, should be like. Uh, just to give you a few examples on of what those educational topics may look like, the ones that you are going to propose to the team. Uh, so, for instance, if you will hear from the team that they have never been through any uh, team formation exercise, uh, so I would definitely uh, recommend to them to go through one, even if they have been together for some time, it is going to be very valuable for them to go through a team formation uh, together. Other uh, example could be sub, uh, suggesting to them, or recommending to them to go through training sessions on different topics. Uh, for instance, you can train them on how to prioritize, how to build, build Kanban board, or what is a Kanban board, uh, what is the cost of delay, and there can be, you know, again, many, many other topics that's, that the team might need to, uh, to be aware of. Again, uh, go back to your coaching toolkit to, to pull those topics from. Or you can also see that it might be valuable for the team to have a book club session. So again, uh, the, the examples or the type of sessions that you can propose to the team may vary. Uh, um, but these are just some examples uh, for you to think about. Um, so once you build the proposal, once you will have uh, the hypothesis and the set of those seven, eight topics together, uh, share them back with the, with the team. So that will be the next step. Uh, share them with the team. I would suggest to share them either over email um, or you can also meet the team. But in any case, try to make sure that you describe, uh, so you share your proposal in a written form. Um, it can be again in the email or as in a Word document. And what do you should describe? Um, so definitely make sure that you describe each session separately in terms of what uh, would be the content of the session, but also why, uh, again, explain the reasoning of why you are proposing the topic. So why a certain topic would be suitable for the team. What I would also recommend, because then the team at the end is going to be choosing only around three, four topics that you will be delivering for them. So what I would also recommend is to kind of from those seven, eight, um, I as a coach, I would definitely recommend to the team which ones would be the most suitable and I would explain them why. So for instance, one of the examples that I already mentioned, so if you would see that the team that you're engaging with hasn't been through an educational vision, um, I would definitely recommend this team uh, to go through a chartnering session as the very first thing to do. Um, again, it's just a recommendation. The team will be deciding themselves uh, finally what they want to go through. Uh, but you as a coach can obviously guide them and explain them why it would be good for them to go through certain topics. Um, so once you share your proposal, ask for any feedback. Uh, ask for feedback on the hypothesis. Ask them if there are any uh, anything missing in the hypothesis, if it's uh, really related well to their originally expected outcome. Ask them whether they would suggest other measurable goals of this engagement. Um, get any input on the on the topics. Also ask them if there is any topic that you haven't uh, proposed, but they would definitely like to go through and discuss uh, what would be kind of the best um, best final selection. And as, as I was mentioning, uh, so yeah, you are coming with around seven eight topics to the team, but they uh, but they should be choosing only around three four topics. They can choose more. Again, it really depends on uh, your time commitment, how much time you have for this particular engagement. As I was mentioning on uh, the beginning, uh, this educational vision that I'm talking to you about um, is suitable for shorter 
engagements in terms of the time. Uh, so that's why I'm saying they should be choosing three, four topics. But if you will see that you have more time that you can spend with the team, so um, I would definitely then leave it up to you to decide how many topics uh, uh, you can you can propose and you can let the team choose from. I wouldn't go um, into less than three topics. So why not then, why, why the team shouldn't be choosing less than three topics? Uh, well, simply because um, if you would only deliver one or two training sessions to the team, it is not going to be a kind of a coaching engage, engagement. Uh, the length um, and kind of, you know, the length of this relationship or your engagement would be just too short and probably wouldn't be able to deliver um, a really good impact to the team. So I would definitely suggest to at least spend the spend time together uh, to go through three, four sessions together uh, while you're observing the teams. So you can really have some impact, some good impact on, on the team and their uh, education and their uh, kind of improvements and the mindset. All right, so now when we know how to build an educational vision, let's, uh, let's look at what are the steps of implementing it. So uh, once obviously you will get the answer back from the team on which topics they would like to, or which topics they, they chose from your proposal. Uh, yeah, just go through some final questions with them, final details before you start planning, just to make sure that kind of the content of the education vision is uh, clear for everyone. Um, um, and then obviously you will start planning those sessions with the team. Uh, so here are a few tips for you uh, in terms of planning. Um, obviously, you know, depending on the, the organization or the teams that you will be working with, uh, you can be working with uh, collocated teams or distributed teams. You will be working with teams that have been together for some for already some time or the teams that just got together, they are completely new to each other. So depending on obviously what your situation will be, um, the planning will vary as well, will be different. Uh, so uh, here are just a few tips, um, just few things to think about when you'll be scheduling the sessions. Um, I will definitely, uh, you know, whenever I'm kind of training the teams and uh, going through this education vision with them, I always suggest for the team to be together in one location. Um, so this is obviously valid for the teams that are distributed. Uh, so if, if that's not possible for all the sessions, if, if, you know, if the budget doesn't allow or if, you know, the type of work doesn't allow the teams to be together for a longer time or for all the sessions, um, I would definitely at least suggest for the team to get together for the very first uh, session um, or at least especially if, if the first session is a formation uh, or team formation session. Uh, the team formation session is really uh, the one focus on kind of um, the culture, the behaviors, uh, the mindset within the team and uh, it is going to be much more impactful um, for the team if they would be really able to spend the time together in one location uh, because obviously besides spending the time going through this team formation session then they can spend a lot, lot more informal time together um, and yeah, this is just going to, to help them to, to become um, a stronger team. Um, so this will be the first suggest suggestion. Um, if, um, so if you will be able to get uh, a distributed team or the team that is typically in different locations together uh, and you will be given, let's say, a week uh, to deliver your education vision. So one thing you can also do is to just deliver all the sessions throughout one week. So this way you will leverage uh, the fact that the team or the team members are all together and they can really um, improve uh, and uh, yeah, get better and learn much more or learn new things um, throughout this one week interaction. So you could work with the team to create some sort of a summit or you know, an, an on-site um, 
uh, during which they will go through all those sessions that you uh, so that, that they choose that they chose for for the education vision uh, so that will be one approach that you could think about um, in case uh, you will see that it's impossible to get everyone into the same location if in case the team is distributed uh, so again try to at least make them get together for the team formation session otherwise um, then you can spread the topics or the spread the educational sessions uh, over a longer period of time um, but with not very long breaks in between so I would suggest to to run uh, educational session every week or every two weeks um, and in between the, the sessions uh, you can always try to um, to give uh, some sort of homework back to the team uh, so they can run some simple experiments and things like that um, and this would be the case also for instance in in case you're working with a team that is um, collocated uh, always so there are no uh, members who are kind of in other locations so in this case when you have all the people together in one location um, I would also recommend this approach of uh, delivering the sessions uh, in bi-weekly kind of spread uh, because this way again you are kind of creating a longer term uh, relationships with them and, and they will be able to to practice and implement what they are learning during the sessions um, yeah in between pretty much uh, um, well so they will be able to implement whatever they learn before the the next uh, training session uh, so creating this kind of um, longer term educational pathway with them is going to have much greater impact uh, and and much longer on them all right so this is a little bit on the planning and uh, let's let's look at or uh, let's think about some behaviors uh, your behaviors as a coach during your engagement with the team uh, so here are just few tips a few things that I would recommend you to do as well uh, so make sure that you continue observing the team uh, so don't stop doing that once you build your education vision observations are going to help you really to collect a lot of data uh, you'll be able to see where the team is kind of improving and going to the right directions when you will start delivering the educational sessions to them and observe with empathy and foresight uh, so yeah make sure that you are not you know judging anyone that you are kind of observing with open mind uh, and trying to, to really listen and see um, what's going on uh, trying to understand the the culture and the mindset of, of the team um, make sure that you collect a regular feedback um, so you can do that uh, for instance by running short retros uh, at the end of each educational sessions you can collect a little bit of feedback like that you can collect feedback by uh, when, when you will have sort of the regular 101s with the team members you can ask them there how uh, the engagement has been going for them um, and it can be any you know any other random feedback um, whenever you interact with the team so just to make, make sure that you are you know open for the feedback and that you um, repeat this often to the team that you are engaging with that you need or that you are you know um, that they should be uh, sharing their feedback with you on a regular basis so that you can also adjust and improve your educational vision throughout the engagement um, obviously use your coaching competencies so you know whatever skills coaching skills you have been uh, able to learn or you you've got uh, make sure that you are using them um, and um, keep open and regular communication with the team members it is not only to um, obviously collect feedback from them but again it's going to help you to have closer relationship with them uh, to build a much stronger trust environment uh, so it will have again much more positive and long-term impact on, on the team after your uh, after you finish the engagement with them so these are just uh, several behaviors I would recommend to you very kind of last thing I would like to mention is uh, kind of the very last step that you would be doing at the end of your uh, of your educational vision 
is the evaluation of the impact. Uh, so I was mentioning on the very beginning that one of the reasons why you want to have one is that you will be able to measure how impactful you were with your uh, coaching engagement. Um, and that's why also when you're bring, putting together the proposal, you should really build together um, a hypothesis with measurable goals. So at the end of your engagement, you can reflect and see um, yeah, how much you have been able to achieve. Um, so how can you evaluate your educational vision and your coaching engagement with a team? Uh, so here again, a few tips um, or few also yeah, approaches that I have been using and that have been uh, quite successful for me. Um, so yeah, make sure that you keep getting the feedback throughout the, the coaching engagement. Uh, for one side, as I was mentioning, it is important to get a feedback so you can also adjust uh, your trainings uh, before you know your educate before your engagement finishes but it's also to pretty much collect um, the data on how uh, how impactful um, uh, your engagement has been with the team so keep getting the feedback is going to give you some tangible data on how your work has been with the team um, at the end, at the very end of the educational vision or the engagement with the team, uh, sit down with the team and review together the hypothesis uh, that you defined on the very beginning and review the, the goals that you agreed on uh, together. Um, uh, summarize whether the goals were achieved, summarize what uh, things you haven't been able to achieve or on contrary whether you have been more successful or in comparison on uh, with the the original expectation. Um, in case that there have there are going to be uh, certain goals, certain you know points that you haven't been able to achieve during the engagement, discuss with the team what uh, you can do together about it. Um, one thing could be to continue the engagement and to create another increment of, of kind of work and the coaching engagement together in case obviously in case your time allows you to continue working with the team. Um, and another thing could be uh, for a team to continue self-educate themselves. They can also start uh, exploring the topics on their own because obviously now uh, by the time that you finished your engagement, they already should have um, the culture of, you know, um, uh, meeting together or running some, some sort of ceremonies that will help them to continue improving uh, together. Uh, so yeah, again, have a discussion with the team on what, what to do with uh, any, any missing goals that you haven't been able to achieve throughout the, uh, the initial uh, engagement together. Um, you can also have a final reflection session with the team. You can have a, for instance, a retrospective on, on the entire uh, educational vision where you can kind of gather your final feedback with the team. Uh, or another, another great tool that really works well is to send, uh, you can send a post engagement survey with the team uh, where you can ask very specific questions on the impact uh, that the engagement has had on, on them. And obviously the, the results of this survey uh, will be, so, so that's something that you can use as a tangible outcome. Um, for your for your next engagements or for kind of the next increment of work with this uh, team. Um, so with that said, um, this is uh, well. Um, uh, so so this way, I, I was I wanted to share with you a, a practice or a tool that I'm using when engaging with uh, agile teams. Uh, the simple steps how you can build an educational vision and how to be implemented with a with a team. So I hope that uh, this webinar has been useful for you. Thank you very much for for listening, for learning about educational vision. Uh, and once again, I will be more than happy uh, to discuss any questions, any doubts that you have, or any experiences that you will be having by by implementing it. Um, thank you very much, and I'll be looking forward to talking to you again soon.